Should it be updated to include digital rights? Absolutely. Digital rights really are the new kind of forefront of, of, of where human rights are human rights are going. And frankly, if one doesn't have rights, uh, if one has rights offline but not online, then frankly, one doesn't have rights at all. The gatherings like this uh, aim to bring people together in dialogue. That's very important. But it's also quite easy at an event like this to to forget that there are significant divides and barriers, specifically between civil society, uh, the human rights fraternity, and in, and in some instances, uh, governments. So to give you an example of that, uh, Nigeria is, the, is actually a, something of a positive case study now, having passed something called the Digital Rights and Freedoms Bill in the last couple of, uh, last couple of weeks. And that bill has uh, been passed by the Assembly, but is still to be signed into law by the President. So when the President signs it into law, essentially people living in Nigeria will have human rights online. That's, that's been a model of civil society, government uh, cooperation that's, that's led to what is, we hope, a very positive outcome. It's not the case everywhere. The challenge of uh, cyber, cy cy cyber crime, both in uh, the sense of malfeasance on the internet, but also the use of cyber crime legislation to clamp down on legitimate forms of expression, um, it's a double-edged sword in that regard, is, is an enormous challenge. Uh, I think there's polarization uh, around that issue in particular. Um, so bringing people together like this is very important, but, some, but, but one, one, can't, one can't overlook the need for, uh, for more directive dialogue um, to, to, to sort of for, force, force the hand of those who, 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 who use the internet to essentially stifle expression.